started is when you hear the word healthy, what does that mean to you? How do you define healthy? Eating the right foods, Eating the right foods exercise. exercise, okay. Anything else? What's healthy mean to you? Not sick. <laughs> Not being sick, okay. Having energy. Having energy. Just generally feeling good about yourself. Okay. And strong and able to do what you want to do. Okay, good, good. So hopefully everybody is feeling healthy today. All right, I won't ask you for a show of hands or anything. <laughs> um, but people will define healthy in different ways. And if you could advance the slide for me. <laughs> There you go. All right. So think about it. Is it the absence of disease, like she was talking about, it, you know, is it that I don't have any illnesses and therefore I'm healthy? Is it that I feel overall good? Okay. Is it that I can take care of myself? So in other words, nobody else has to care for me, so therefore I'm healthy? The answer is it's up to you to, to figure out and define what is healthy mean to you. And that's okay. Everybody's got an individual perspective. Um, go ahead. But one of the things when we look at overall health, and very often we think physical right away, that's the most obvious. But we have other pieces of health that we have to make sure we are also thinking about, okay? And um, go ahead, there's actually four little ones that are going to pop up. Okay, first one, physical, okay? Makes sense? We think about that automatically. Go ahead. We also have to be healthy spiritually, right? If that's in balance. That's a, that's a big part of our lives. Emotional health, very important. We have a lot of physical things that happen when really it's all tied to our emotional status or state. Okay, go ahead, one more. And psychosocial, does anybody know what psychosocial means? Do I have any nurses in here? I should ask that question. Okay, I'm a nurse practitioner, yes. There you go. Okay, do you want to help out with the definition of psychosocial? Um, <laughs> well, I know, in a nutshell, right? Okay, <laughs> what it is is that you, sometimes you're your mental status will affect how you interact with other people at all times. Right. So it's looking at the relationships, the social network, the support that you have, all of that fits under psychosocial. Those <coughs> components, those four pieces together, in a very broad sense, make up the individual person. And as long as all of these pieces <laughs> are in sync with each other, all right, most of the time people are going to say, yeah, I feel pretty healthy. But if you've got something going on in any of these different domains or these different components, you feel a little off balance or something's not right, then you start to wait to sort of stop and say, oh my goodness, you know, something's not right, I don't feel healthy. I mean, we don't use those words. But um, So for the purposes of what I'm going to be talking about today, it's these two pieces, physical and emotional. Okay? Spiritual, you've heard other spiritual discussions today, so hopefully you've been able to glean some information from, from some of those things. Psychosocial, um, I don't know if there were any other sessions that talked about interaction with family or you know social support systems, but that would be the other piece. The paper that I gave you has all four of these domains or these um, components on them, and my goal for you either during or now maybe after we've attended all the different sessions, is to start creating your own prescription for your healthy living. What does that look like for you? What, are, what do the things in each of these different domains, what does that look like that will help you to define yourself as a healthy person? And again, that's going to differ from one person to the next. Okay? Again, we're going to talk about physical and emotional. All right? Okay, so some things I just want to point out to you as we get started. Um, first of all, this is a true or false question. True or false question. Defects and deficits in health are part of a sinful world and flesh. Is that true or false? True, yes. Next one. We strive to improve, but we know we will never be perfect in this lifetime. True or false? True. True. Yeah, that's the reality, folks. <laughs> and so hopefully nobody was coming today to get like the magic answer for fixing all of this, because it's not there. <laughs> um, but does that mean we necessarily throw in the towel and just sort of give up and say, oh, forget it, we don't want to do anything, and I'll just sort of sit back and let life happen? No. We still have purposes. Um, and, and really that's what we want to do is never lose sight of what that purpose is in life like we've been hearing about all day today. We have a vocation. We have a calling to glorify God and serve him and serve others. Um, I read a book a while back, and I just remember there was one statement in there, and I wrote it down. Um, 
it was a fictional book, but it, the, the sentence was, was God speaking, and he was telling a person, be him to me, or be me to him, I'm sorry, be me to him. In other words, portray who I am as God um, to this particular individual. And I think that says so much you know, related to this. You're trying to portray, or as we talked about this morning, magnify God to other people. Um, but you gotta be healthy in order to do that. Okay, go ahead. All right, the other thing to keep in mind, um, and sometimes we see this happening in healthcare, um, people struggling with, you know, medical issues that they just don't, don't know how to deal with or they can't accept. Um, sometimes what happens is they, they start to approach the situation um, <clears throat> feeling like, you know, if I had a stronger faith, or if I prayed more, or I did more, then, then I would be healed, right? Um, we have a situation, we had a situation in um, northern Wisconsin, a uh, mother and father who had a 12-year-old daughter who had diabetes. Their philosophy was medicine, medical care, no, they didn't want that. They believed that God was going to heal their child by praying, okay? Um, and, and that's probably taking it to an extreme, but I see this happen where people get into this mode of, if I just pray more, if I have a better faith, or I'm sick because I don't have a strong enough faith. Remember that sometimes God's answer to all of that is by giving you health care um, in the form of whether it's medication or you know just whatever treatment kinds of things people need. And so sometimes that's a little lost in the shuffle and um, you know, I'm not saying faith isn't important, of course it is, but remember that God has different ways of answering our, our needs and our prayers and things, okay? All right, go ahead. All right, the other thing I think it's important to, to remember when we're talking about health and the human body is whose body is it, really? Um, so I have a few passages I pulled out. Uh, this one's from Psalm, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. Uh, from 1 Corinthians, do you not know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit? What is, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own, right? We, we don't own ourselves. You were brought into Christ, therefore honor God with your bodies. And then the last one we actually heard this morning. Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. So it is a form of, of how we worship God as far as how we treat our bodies. Okay. All right, one of the things that I have just throughout my nursing career really come to um, continue to be, to be amazed at is how much of a miracle the human body really is. The more I learn about it, the more I learn all its complexities and in, in intricate ways of functioning, it's absolutely amazing to me. And um, no human being could ever have figured any of this out, all right, because it is so complex. Um, but that just reinforces how much of a miracle the human body really is. And so it's, it's just really uh, amazing. So. All right, so we're going to talk first about the physical components. Okay, remember I said we're going to do physical and emotional. So we'll talk first about physical. And most of the time when we think physical, healthy eating and exercise are the two pieces that I hear the most. All right. This really gives it a nice little description or a nice uh, illustration. So obviously... <laughs> What we eat and what we burn off for calories is going to determine then, are we staying at the same weight, are we gaining weight, are we losing weight, all right? So it's just kind of this, this balance game. Unfortunately, we have a lot of people in our society who believe that there's ways to sort of get past this or work around this to achieve perfection in their, their bodies, right? Okay. Um, here, one guy says, well, you know, sure, I've put on a few pounds this winter, but it's mostly water weight. Have you heard that before? Right? All right. Um, go ahead to the next one. Um, we get into this mode of thinking we need to have a quick fix to make things better. Um, and I'm sure you're going you're gonna to relate to a lot of these examples I'm going to give. But my first question is, are cookies a food group? All right, that's a very important question to, to answer in a session like this. All right, are they a food group? Anybody know? Yes. <laughs> They're that little tiny food group that says moderation or sparingly. <laughs> the sweets and fun things. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead and click it. Um, but here's an interesting thing. You can actually go on a diet where that's what you eat is cookies. 
Okay, in my last session, somebody actually knew somebody who had been on the cookie diet. All right, you eat one cookie for lunch, or one for breakfast, one for lunch, and I think you get a somewhat regular meal for supper, for dinner. Um, anyway, so here's, here's where cookies maybe are a part of a food group. I don't know. But what we see is this is very common, these quick, easy, appealing looking things. Boy, if I could eat a cookie and lose weight, wouldn't that be awesome? Um, but that's where we're, we're really seeing so much of this effort being portrayed in the media and you know those infomercials that you watch at 3 o'clock in the morning when you have insomnia. And, um, but that's, that's what we're, we're facing, a lot of this, this pressure and belief that we can just quickly fix it. But you will lose weight because you're only eating one cookie. Yeah, one cookie. exactly, exactly. <laughs> you're right. We're going to talk about that. Um, here's another diet you might want to try, the Swiss cheese diet. This guy lost 60 pounds on the Swiss cheese diet. So, you know, take your pick. All right. Now, we know, though, that unfortunately, despite what everything we hear about and see about, whether it's in the magazines, the movies, the internet, whatever, um, there is no magic answer. All right. There's no perfect body, obviously, there's no perfect way to get this, all right? Okay. Um, however, people try really hard, though, to achieve it, don't they? All right, have you seen any of these kinds of things? Atkins, he's, he was pretty popular, okay? South Beach diet, mm -hmm. you heard of that? Flat belly diet? The zone, you heard of the zone diet? Mm -hmm. I think everybody gets a, a rating or something that you're in different zones and then you're supposed to eat accordingly. I mean, I could have listed or shown pictures of probably hundreds of these fad diets. Um, but this is the, the appeal is, boy, there's got to be something more than just eating a, a healthy diet and exercising. Can't I do something else to try to achieve this, right? Um, anybody else know other diets? Can you think of others? Like, um, a lot of people are getting into, like, the Zumba, the Zumba, you know? Okay. Is that, is that exercise or is that a diet? It's like an exercise. exercise. Okay, okay. They're saying now it's a fad. Oh, okay. It doesn't really work. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. I don't know anything about Zumba, so it's I'm like, not sure. It's like, it's a dance. Like aerobics, dance, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a, it's a fad. Not everybody trying to think. Okay. It's really blowing up, I guess. Okay, all right. Any other fad diets that you know of? There was some, somebody had something about a cabbage soup diet. Oh, yes, yeah. the cabbage oh, soup diet, yes. Right. <laughs> That's okay, I don't like cabbage on a good day, so. so that would not be good. <laughs> that would not be great. No, uh -huh. The grapefruit diet, if you've heard oh, of that one before. Uh -huh. Okay, anybody else know others? I don't know what it's called, but the ladies at my work are eating this chili. And it's like a whole, it's like a system, like kind of like herbal soup herbal life used to be. This is a soup they soup. Like, they're eating chili, this chili that they eat it every single day, and it's like, wow. but yeah. yeah <laughs> there's a super, super, super soup, soup, something like that, and okay. you, you make this big pot, and it's supposed to have Okay. Oh, and That's the other fun. one is, it works. I have these ladies that are doing the body wraps, mm -hmm. things in there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. How much money do you think people are spending on these things? Oh, oh, wow. Wow. Millions of dollars. Um, I have a very good friend. She goes to church with me. We were in choir together. I love her dearly. But we have opted to disagree about this topic. Um, not so much with bad diets, but she is just really into all the supplements and things like that. And, and I'm certainly not an expert on the whole supplement thing. However, um, I see how much money she forks out for these things, and it, it just, it, it's amazing to me. Um, and yet she's always trying something new because the one that she tried before didn't work. It, it didn't make her feel any better. Uh, one day she came to Bible study, and I just, it, this is hilarious. She brought this, it was a glass, like a clear glass, so you could see through it, and it was this green, it almost looked like a little bit like pea soup, like that consistency Ooh. and she had like fruit or not fruit um, vegetables like stalks of celery and stuff sticking out of it and she's drinking this thing and these couple men in the congregation come up to her they're like what is that you know what are you drinking um but this is you know this is what she does and, and unfortunately she's trying so hard to find the answer to make her feel better and it, it's just i'm not sure that she's going to find it in these different products but we see people like this. They'll come in and they'll say, I don't want any medication. Medicines are bad. 
And then they tell you they've got this whole list of herbal supplements that they're doing. And again, I'm not, I don't want to bash that kind of stuff. It's just that you got to know what you're taking. You've got to know what you're using because you can do too much of a good thing too. And people get into this mode of thinking, well, it's natural or it's herbal, so therefore it must be safe and effective. But there's lots of those products that are out there that can interfere or interact with current medications people are on and mm -hmm. create some really serious okay. sorts of side effects. But you see commercials with like the products that medicine they would give you and they list all kinds of side effects that it causes. Yes, they have to. medicine. Yes, yes. And I'm like, why would I want yeah. to take that <laughs> to make me feel this way right. I'm trying to make my feel, myself feel better? Right, right. Um, just bottom line, keep in mind, remember that every single medication, and that includes herbs, supplements, vitamins, all of it, they all have that same list of, not same, but they all have a list of potential side effects. Um, you heard of John, St. John's wort? Mm -hmm. Okay, major interactions and problems with a whole slew of medications that people are taking out there. Um, can interfere or interact with um, blood sugar, blood clotting. A lot of the herbal supplements have a negative impact on your body's blood clotting mechanisms. So if you've got a history of any kind of blood clotting issues and it's just, it really is scary when you, and perhaps you've seen some of these patients that come in and, you know, first of all, just trying to get them to admit that they're taking these things because they don't think of them as medications, you know. Um, if anybody's going for a surgery and they're going to go under anesthesia, a whole list of all those herbal supplements and things, they've got to be off that stuff before they can go under anesthesia because it could potentially be very, very dangerous. So, again, people don't, process it because it's it's natural, it's over the counter, I can buy it, no problem. Even things like your ibuprofen and Tylenol have side effects that people don't even think about. You know, uh, Tylenol affects your liver, ibuprofen is your kidneys. So take your pick, which organ do you want to have an influence on today, you know? I mean, it's just, it really, so, you know, I think in a smart way we can deal with this, but we have to also be very educated about it too, and, and that's where another lecture, whole another presentation, <laughs> truly. Uh, but yes, you make a good point. And the thing is, legally, they have to tell you all those side effects. Mm -hmm. So, okay, go ahead. Um, all right, so characteristics of a fad diet. What are the, the things that are going to give you the red flag? So that if you see this stuff, or your neighbor comes to you and says, hey, I want to buy a bottle of green algae, or whatever it was a few years ago, let's split the cost, it's only $29.95. What a deal, right? Um, how are you going to know and filter out some of those things that you're seeing and hearing? So here's some things. Does it promise a quick fix? Okay, this is a test of patience. It is not a sprint. It is a cross-country race. Okay, it's a marathon. Um, and so things that promise quick fixes, more often than not, don't work. Okay. Um, does it sound too good to be true? If it does, it probably is. Okay, next. Uh, recommendations are based on a single study where there's very little research, if any, or they convince some movie star to come and sort of promote this, um, but there's not a lot of scientific evidence behind it. Does it give you a list of good and bad foods? Okay, so does it make you, kind of force you to say, well, all of this over here is good, so I can have as much of this as I want. All of this is really bad, so I have to avoid it. That would be a red flag, okay? Think about Atkins. What did he restrict or tell you to restrict? Carbs. Carbs. carbs yes. Do you need carbs to survive? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Very much so. Really bad things happen when you eliminate carbs from your diet. Okay. So a diet should never ask you to do this. All right. You talk to a dietitian. Any dietitians in here? All right. They're going to tell you this is one of the worst things you can do when you're trying to control a diet and control your eating. Why is that? What's the problem with this? Okay, imbalance, what else? What happens if you have this list of things that are bad for you? That's all you want. That's all you want, exactly, right? So the idea is everything in moderation. It's about portion sizes, it's about controlling uh, the amount that you're eating, the size of the portion that you're eating, okay? We have gotten out of control with portion sizes in this country, right? Uh, think about your fast food places, any of you seen the movie Super Size Me? Okay, a lot of times they show that in schools and health. Did you see it in your health class? Okay. 
get the movie sometime. It's quite interesting. Um, usually the reaction I get from people, because I show it in the nutrition class um, that I teach, I usually have the students say, I'm never going to eat McDonald's again, mm -hmm. because it's focused on all the behind the scenes of McDonald's and how really bad McDonald's can be for you. Now, that's one restaurant, certainly all the fast food restaurants can be kind of lumped together, but think about you know, all these, these bigger sizes of things. And what has that done? What, what kinds of adjustments have you seen that we've had to make in society because of all this enlarged stuff? Well, look at the city of New York that tried to ban <laughs> yeah. the supersized drinks. Yeah, yes. mm -hmm. and that didn't, they, they, they yeah. stopped it, didn't they? I think they did. Yeah. 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 All right, anything else? Other things you're seeing in society because of the... Um, not to change subject, but I see nowadays on TV where they talk about Sensa and how good it is for you, and it, you can use it, and it, you're already full. Right. Okay. I'm like, why could you use something like that and just be like, you're full, just your body should automatically tell you that anyway. Right. right. Yeah, you should be able to rely on those those inner mechanisms mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anything else? Well, we're getting bigger as a society, weight wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was just having a discussion with somebody from the previous um, session. She was a nurse, and she was saying, oh, you know, we were having to even make equipment in the hospital bigger. Um, mm -hmm. You know, our beds have to have a bigger capacity. Our wheelchairs have to have a bigger capacity. Um, one of the hospitals, I was part of a health system in Milwaukee, one of the hospitals had to actually re revamp all of their bathrooms because they had wall-mounted toilets. And they only have a 250-pound capacity. So, you know, people were crashing with them because they weighed more than 250 pounds. So now all of them have to be cemented into the the floor instead. So, yeah. The one thing I'm seeing a lot more, and I don't know if it's because of the super sizes, but there's a lot more children with the diabetes. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Type 2 diabetes in kids, huge problems. High cholesterol in kids, definitely an issue. Um, childhood obesity is just, it's become an epidemic in, in this country. Yeah. And it's so you can, you know, look to the food, but then also what else? The right. exercise. Yeah. The exercise issues mm -hmm. that go along with that, yeah. Um, you know, video games, TV, yeah. and then they've cut out phi ed classes in yes. schools, and a lot of the sports are being right. cut out because there's no budget for it, and yeah, it's it's really, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next decade, so. Um, okay, do the recommendations of this particular diet product try to sell you something, all right? Are they, are they saying, well, you can lose this weight if you buy fill in the blank, okay? Um, does it eliminate a food group? Okay, so that would be another thing. And then the last um, piece is just, again, is there a lack of evidence? So scientific research to back up what is, is going on with this, okay? All right. So here's, here's a product. How many of you think you would do this? How exciting, right? What does it do? Where does your eye get drawn as you look at this? Tapeworms. Look at that. Fat. They even chunked up the words for you, right? And then read right below it. Without exercise, dieting, or surgery, you know, three unpleasant things nobody wants to do. So we can get rid of all of that fat without any of those three things. It's safe for kids, too. And it's safe for oh. kids. And this is even better. You could win this pewter bleeding bowl. Don't ask me. I don't know. Anyway, to see details inside of the curtain, right? Um, and not only that, but look at that, it get, gets rid of life-threatening fat, not just your regular fat or basic fat that you have, it's the life-threatening stuff it gets rid of, okay? Now, it's flavorful. It is flavorful. Certainly, we can look at this and go, oh, come on, but there's a lot of stuff out there somewhat similar to this that people are purchasing because they're desperate, okay? Here's another diet you might want to try. Um, it's the latest thing. It's called the veterinarian diet. Okay, anybody who's had dogs, you know that they put that collar on if they've had surgery or something going on. Okay. Um, so what is the answer? Okay, after all of this discussion, we go back to the basics. We go back to the basics. So here's our, our friend back to the doctor. He says, eat less and exercise more. That's the most ridiculous fad diet I've ever heard of. <laughs> right? And that's how people view your basics. They are constantly looking for the quick and easy. Go ahead. 
Okay, are you familiar with this? Have you seen this before? Um, every so many years, the, the Department of, I think it's Agriculture, and the U.S. government tries to kind of give a, a visual picture of the food groups. And so before this, and this may be one that you're more familiar with, it was a pyramid, and it had um, vertical bands or stripes, and then depending on how wide the band was, was supposed to kind of give you a visual of how much you should or shouldn't be eating from that. And so incidentally, the chocolate chip cookies, it was a yellow thin stripe right down the, the side of it, as well as the other sweets and, and fun stuff, right? Um, anyway, this came out in 2010. It's my plate. And you can the website's there, choosemyplate.gov. Um, incidentally, I had every intention I was going to put this up on the screen, the website, so that you could see it and see all the different features that it offers. However, our government's going to shut down. <laughs> Apparently, they shut down the website as well. Um, if it ever gets up and running again, take a look at the website. It's really awesome. Those of you who work with kids, there's a whole bunch of kids' materials on there. But what I really um, encourage you, you might want to think about, on that website, you can go in and create a profile for yourself. Put your um, gender, age, height, weight, um, I don't know, there's some other demographic things. And you can tell them, am I trying to stay at the same weight, lose weight, gain weight? Based on what you input, they will give you a report of how many calories you should be eating every single day as well as the different number of servings from each of the food groups that you should be getting on a daily basis. So that's the first part. Second part, if you're interested, is you can go in there and actually track or log your food that you're, you're eating every single day. You can also do activity if you want. But what it'll do with the food is it'll then compare and say, okay, you've met your goal, or the recommendation for you, or not. <laughs> um, you know, increase this, decrease that, whatever it might be. So it's just kind of an interesting thing if you just even do it a couple days to see, are you really truly getting where you need to be? Um, I do this with the, the students at the college, and usually I have them do it for three days. And it's really eye-opening for them because they think they're doing great, okay? And most of the time, there's deficiencies in something. Probably the two big ones I see is dairy. They're lacking in dairy. And then girls, deficiency in protein because they're cutting out meat, but they're not replacing it with any other protein source. So those are probably the biggies that I see. The other thing to keep in mind with grains is you wanna make at least half of your grains that you're taking in in a day whole grains. All right, anybody know what's the importance of whole grains? Okay, not processed, correct, and so what does it give us? It gives us fiber, and why is fiber important? Digestion. Okay, digestion keeps us full, so the idea is you don't eat as much. Any other thoughts? One keeps, other you regular. keeps you regular. Enhances absorption of other particular foods. Okay, yes, cholesterol for one. It, it gets rid of, helps you get rid of some of the bad cholesterol in your system. So at least half, and certainly if you can make it a goal to make all of your grains whole grains, that would be the ideal. The other thing that happens with grains is when they do the refining process, um, a lot of those vitamins are removed, like your B vitamins. Now, things like breads and cereals, they do put it back in, but you still it's still best to get it from that whole grain, truly, because then you get the fiber with it. So. Okay, now the other on the other flip side of all this, of course, is the exercise piece, and I'm sad to tell you that you cannot use the excuse, I can't find my shoes, as a reason why you can't exercise, okay? Um, you want to try to incorporate some kind of activity. And even if it's just a little bit of something, is better than nothing, okay? One of the, the big concerns, I guess, that people will run into is they think, okay, I have to right away jump into this major, you know, two-hour exercise routine every single day, and I just can't possibly do that, so therefore I'm not going to do anything. And that's not a good approach either. You want to at least incorporate some kind of activity in your daily routine. Okay. Does anybody know who this is? Baby Bob. Baby Bob. Baby Bob. Yeah. I was thinking about this as I was driving down here because I knew I had put this in here. And the only reason I did is because it had the where are my shoes. Um, but 
my daughter, my oldest daughter, this would have been 20 years ago already that she would have been really into Barney and Baby Bob. So anyway, I'm dating myself. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, so the recommendations exercise uh, at least 60 minutes a day. Okay. Now, depending on what, what source you read, it may say four to five times a week. It might say five to six. Some of them say every day. Um, don't let that piece discourage you. It's much better to just think about how can I incorporate more activity into my daily routine. And in some cases, breaking it up into 20 minute or even 10 minute segments is better than doing nothing. Or better than trying to figure out, do I even have 60 minutes that I can dedicate to exercise in my day? Some people are actually putting this in their appointment calendars, just as if it was a meeting or other appointment that they had to do, and they just continue to, to get it into their, their daily routine to do some kind of exercise, okay? So one of the things that we love in healthcare is acronyms. So this is just one that I kind of put together to help remember um, the, the idea to be active, okay? So first of all, be realistic, all right? My guess is, unless maybe these two young ladies up here, none of us are gonna go out tomorrow and run a marathon. Have you guys ever run a marathon? A half, see? Uh, yeah, just a half. And a half is how many miles? 13.1 oh, 13 .1 miles. Okay, so my guess is many of us will not be doing, going out and doing that tomorrow, okay? Um, but be realistic about this. Now, I, I got this thought about the marathon in my brain because my daughter came home, my other daughter came home yesterday and said, I'm gonna start training for a half marathon that I'm gonna run next summer. Okay, that's very realistic, you know, to start training. My husband looks at me and says, what do you think? Should we do this? And I'm like, oh yeah, I'd love to do it. Um, and then we sort of dropped the conversation. Well, this morning we wake up and he kind of looks at me and goes, were you really serious about doing a half marathon? <laughs> I said, oh, I wish I could. But I'm also realistic and know that that's probably not gonna work. So, um, but be realistic for yourself. You know, if you're not doing anything now, maybe tomorrow it's 10 minutes and that's an improvement from where, from where you were the day before. Okay, be realistic. Enjoy the exercise, all right? Think about all the exercise equipment that we find at rummage sales and Goodwill and the resale shops because people got, you know, oh, I'm gonna buy this fabulous equipment and then they never use it or it's still sitting in the garage with clothes hanging on it or some sort of thing, right? It becomes a clothes rack. Um, can you relate to that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure it's something that you enjoy, all right? I did it for Valentine's Day. What's that? My husband got me a uh, roll machine for Valentine's Day. Oh, oh nice guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Did you throw it at him? <laughs> well, I took it gracefully, but it's, it's still downstairs in the basement. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, does it have an aerobic component? So that's where you know, you're getting your heart beating a little faster and the lungs are working a little harder. You need to have an aerobic piece to that. And again, that doesn't mean you have to run. You know, dancing, biking, swimming is a really good one. We do a lot of um, encouraging of swimming for our, especially our older adults who are having trouble like with joints and things where you don't want to have that impact on the joints. Swimming is a really good option for that. Um, consistency. The more you can build this into your routine, the more it's just going to become a habit for you. All right. But unfortunately what happens is you start out really good, right? Day one, day two, I'm on a roll. Maybe even for a week you're on a roll, okay? And then, oh, this, you know, today there was this long meeting and I didn't get home till 10 o'clock, so who feels like exercising at 10 o'clock? And the next day the kids have a sporting event, so why am I not getting home very early, so I won't do it today? And, and suddenly that consistency that we're trying to achieve with exercise is now consistency with not exercising, all right? And it becomes very easy to go down that road. So keep at it. It's gonna take two to three weeks of consistent working at it before it becomes part of your, your daily routine. Um, strength training, very important. Now, this is not, you're gonna go out and do a bodybuilding weightlifting contest, okay? But more and more we are seeing the benefits of strength training, so muscle kinds of things. And it also benefits you in your bone health as well. And as women, why do we have to worry so much about bone health? Osteoporosis. Osteoporosis, yeah. So the more strengthening kinds of things. It, you don't even have to go out and buy weights. If you've got cans of vegetables in your cupboard, lift as you're watching TV, okay? Um, my husband thinks I'm crazy. I have a weight, a five pound weight in my car, and I lift <laughs> as I'm driving, because I drive all over the place. 
I only do one hit at a time though, so I'm still <laughs> safe. Um, and I usually wait till people have driven by me so that they don't wonder if I'm gonna throw this thing at them. But anyway, so think about how to incorporate some of that perhaps into your routine. Um, we do a lot of this with our older adults um, because it starts to build some of that strength and helps with balance so that they're a decreased risk of falling. Um, so uh, increase intensity as you can, uh, visualize your goals, you know, what are you hoping to achieve, um, and enjoy the results. You know, that's, that's important. You want to enjoy what you're doing and not let it become a burden for you. All right, the other thing that's important, we know physical, okay, we've got to work the body, work the muscles and things like that, but keeping your brain fit is also just as important. And we just have to approach it a little bit differently. So how do you keep that brain active? And I just put a few things up here. Um, you know, but historically what we see is that the, the more active people can be, the healthier they tend to be in their, their lives as they continue to age. Um, let me have you go to the next slide. This is, um, this is my inspiration. This is my grandmother. Um, she turned 102 a couple of weeks ago. Oh my goodness. And um, the reason I put her right after the crossword puzzles is because that is my earliest memory of her, was always doing crossword puzzles. That and um, solitaire, but with cards, never the computer, of course, but um, always with cards she would play solitaire. And so um, I don't know, you know, scientifically if that's truly why, but she is as sharp as you can be. And um, I'll take my computer and I'll sit and let her talk and I'll just dictate what she tells us about memories from the past and things. Whether or not it was her doing crossword puzzles or whatever, I don't know, but you know, to be 102 and still have your memory so good is just awesome. Um, now, her eyesight has gone, so she really can't do the crossword puzzles and I had gotten her some of the large print um, devotion books. Mm -hmm. Really can't see those anymore either. But what we've done is we gave her these big earmuff headphones that kind of cancel out noise around her. And so then she can listen to the radio still. And you know, so she's pretty up on current events. So you know, if you need to chat with her about whatever. Um, and as I told the last group, Kathy was in that group, I said, she also watches soap operas. <laughs> <laughs> but we decided at 102 that was probably okay. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so you know, there is something to be said about keeping the mind active. Okay, go um, So it is never too late to learn, okay? We have a lot of people now that are on computers. Um, even in the long-term care settings, assist assisted livings and things, they're incorporating computers a lot of times into um, those common areas and things in those places. Or if you decide you want to do something really interesting, <laughs> this may be your goal Sorry. for life. <laughs> I'm not really a motorcycle person, but I couldn't resist to put this in. <laughs> All right. All right, and then this is the other piece that we're seeing. Um, brace yourselves, old people are learning about Facebook. Okay, how many of you have Facebook accounts? Some of you, all right. Um, I thought my, my daughters were going to absolutely fall over when my father got a Facebook account. They're like, Mom, Grandma's, uh, Grandpa's on Facebook. You know, he's trying to friend me. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, you know, it's just other things that are out there. Go ahead. All right, so what I just encourage is think about things, maybe stuff that you've always wanted to do that you never did, or kind of create your bucket list um, to, to work off of and, and see if there's other things that you might be able to do to keep active, you know, that's important, so, okay. All right, the other piece, as I said, we were gonna talk about is the emotional health part of it. And if you can kind of just imagine you've got two really separate buckets, I'll use that word again, um, when it comes to mental health, we have mental health disorders, you know, people who clinically have a mental health diagnosis or disease. But then, of course, we know that all the daily stuff that we all live through is stressful and, and can create some of that emotional baggage as well. When the, the emotional stuff starts to really affect us physically, that's, that should be a red flag. Um, because then it's starting to affect our ability to get through life, serve others, you know, live out those vocations. And so that's really important that people understand the importance of seeking some assistance at that particular time, right? But we have a problem in this country with mental health, okay? How often do you find people sitting around and just chatting about, oh, 
So how's your depression today? Oh, good, good. My anxiety is just fine. You know, you don't. But do you hear people talking about how, how was your blood pressure the last time you went to the doctor? How was your cholesterol? Okay, they talk about that kind of stuff. What we are, are failing to do is, is understanding mental health as a society. And we have a huge crisis in this country. We don't have enough providers. We don't have enough places, services for mental health issues. And everybody wants to sort of keep it under wraps. Nobody wants to talk about it. Um, but it's a huge issue. We look at what happened in Washington, D.C. Right? I, now, I didn't follow it whole, so I'm not exactly sure what the outcome was. But what I last I heard is that they thought that this woman who drove into the Capitol barricades or whatever had postpartum depression. Um, it's real stuff. It's real stuff. And it's not, you know, the hardest thing is for somebody who doesn't have those kinds of problems to understand what it means to have them. It's not that you can go up to somebody and say, stop being sad. Look at how wonderful life is. Okay, that's not, you're not able to do that. Just like you can't tell somebody who has high blood pressure, would you please make your blood pressure go lower? Okay, you don't have that ability. Um, so lots of issues with, with mental health. Um, there is a genetic component. People don't always realize that. But if it runs in the family, there's most likely going to continue, continue to trickle down. Um, it can affect anybody. Right. Again, lack of care providers and services. We also have a lot of treatment challenges. There's a negative stigma about going to counseling, about being on any kind of medication. Um, some of the medications that we use for these things create really not so, not so fun side effects, so people stop the medications, which isn't good either, because if you abruptly stop some of these things, you can really have some negative mm -hmm. problems after, after you stop. Did you have a question? Yeah, I know I just had a point because I, the part of the mental health prop challenge I think we have is that I understand why it's in place, but people that have mental health problems, because they're 18 and older, they have to commit themselves. Right. And so like if I see something from the outside as a parent or a sibling and I say this person needs help, right. I have to convince them to get it themselves. Yes. You can't do anything to help them. Right. So how is that person that's completely out there, schizophrenic or whatever, they're not going to do that. Right. So they just keep going around and like and it's exactly. like terrible. It is terrible. And they it's fall through the cracks. They fall, yeah. You know, because people don't They're admit. not going to admit themselves. Right. Right. Exactly. And they don't allow people that know them or know the situation to go in and say this person needs help. Right. They yeah. say, well, there's nothing I can do until they come and say, it's very frustrating until or until they are harmed to themselves exactly. yeah, or other people. Somebody. You know, right. then, exactly. then you can we can do, do something. That. Yeah, right. it is. It's it's really a, a tough tough yeah. place, and I certainly don't have the answers, but it, it's an issue. And and again, I think some of it is that we're very good at covering up as a society because whoa, mental health. Mm. You know, it's scary. It's um, frightening, it's um, uh, people don't know enough about it, and so they think it's catching, you know, whatever. Um, you know, it's it's just a, a part of it's a lack of education about what it what it is and what it means and all these kinds of things as well. And this is probably the biggest issue where I see that whole thing about my faith isn't strong enough, and that's why I have depression, or you know, I don't pray enough or whatever, and that's why I'm I'm feeling this way. And if I would just pray more, if I would, my faith. If I would just have a stronger faith, you know, then I would feel better. And, and that's not the case. Um, so if any of you are in any kind of a situation where you're quote unquote counseling, not necessarily formally, but if you're, you know, telling people, oh yeah, you feel better, just pray more. And, and I'm not saying that that's not, that's not good. It's just that it may have gone to a point where more intervention is needed for this individual. And prayer is not going to be the end all answer. The answer may be God saying, you need to get help, you know, so. Okay, um, so very quickly. Um, now, again, I'm going to flip back now to that everyday kind of stress that we deal with. This is really a good thing in laughter, all right? Lots of benefits with laughter. And I'm not talking about people going, ha, ha, ha. Okay, this is like belly laughing, like tears. And as women, you know what happens when we get older and we laugh? <laughs> Do I have to like explain that? Okay. Um, anyway, so go ahead to the next one. So look at all the benefits of laughter. Physically, immune system, lower stress hormones, your pain level. Now I, I kind of disagree with this one at first about relaxing muscles because I thought, boy, my abdominal muscles really hurt sometimes after I've laughed. 
But then I thought, okay, no, but then after that kind of goes, you're just like, oh, this was great, you know. Um, prevents heart disease, mental health benefits, social benefits. You could meet a complete stranger and you're both laughing about the same thing. And don't you feel like a little connection there? It's really cool. So I found this. Laughter is the closest distance between two people. And I thought that was really, really very true. So. Now I want to know what happened, what happens to us between here and here, right? Because this is kids, right? You should not see a kid walking around like this 24-7, no. okay? 200 to 400 times a day, kids are laughing, mm -hmm. okay? Adults, any guess? <laughs> 15 to 20 if we're lucky. Um, no, and I'm not saying that there's not a time and a place for this, but there's also a time and a place for this, and we forget that. But, we're, but I see a lot more kids looking like that. Like that? that? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, stress kinds of things going on. Yeah. And that's not normal. They should be right here. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You want to just laugh with them, don't you? It's a little doll. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, there's also this opportunity that you might have. <laughs> it does involve playing practical jokes on other people. However, <laughs> it might benefit you from an emotional standpoint. All right? Isn't it wonder wonderful to know some people will never become too old? <laughs> so, um, okay, I'm going to have to go to the next slide. I think in the interest, because I think I'm supposed to be done at 10 too. Is that correct? On your schedules? So I don't want to infringe on yeah. Okay. Um, I will just tell you there are a ton of videos out there, just really short YouTube clips that you can really have fun with and just laugh. Um, the first one that I have up here is a man who doesn't say any words. He just laughs for like a minute and a half, and you can't help but giggle with him. The second one is I think yeah I think that one I put on there is a bunch of babies like. Uh, Giggling. Um, the third one, now this is important, if you know someone who's really struggling, you can send them to laughter therapy. Did you know that there was such a thing as laughter therapy? Okay, you can send them to that. Okay, next one. Um, I have this hanging in my office, um, just as a little reminder, God didn't promise days without pain, you know, so we can't ex expect that. Um, laughter without sorrow, nor sun without rain, but he did promise strength for the day, comfort for the tears, and a light for the way. Um, so I hope that in this very short time that we've had, um, you've come up with a few things that you can add onto your prescription for healthy living. Um, I hope you've you know, picked up a, a few little tips and things, and I certainly wish you health as you go on with the rest of your day and, and uh, weeks and months and things to come. So any questions for me at all? All right, I need to do the drawing. Now. <laughs>